Figure it out. Hello, this is Adam Corlick from Figure It Out Productions. The following video is a video of some kind, and I hope you enjoy it. Hey guys, it's Adam here, and I just got done watching uh, Xbox's, like, not E3, but sort of E3-style uh, press conference thing where they announce stuff, you know, in June. Uh, it's weird this year because I'm not out there, and there is no real E3 this year. Anyway, I missed Sony's because I was out of town, unfortunately, otherwise I would have done some sort of video on that. And I think I'll be around when Nintendo does theirs, so hopefully maybe I'll do this again. But anyway, as I typically do every year, I like to give you guys some sort of breakdown of basically what was announced, what I'm excited about, all that sort of thing. Uh, before I get into the nitty gritty of that, which this year is on my phone, I've upgraded, I've gone from that, from paper last year. <laughs> or, well not last year, damn, last time was like 2019? Uh, it's been a minute. Anyway, uh, no, no, wait, no, I, I take that back, I, I did do it last year. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, that said, uh, before I get into it, I want to talk about the show overall. If you missed it, or even if you saw it, I'm curious on your opinion. I thought it was a very par for the course. Not, not home run. I'm doing a golf swing, not a baseball swing. Um, it was par for the course. It was kind of just, this is our stuff. Like, the presentation itself was fine, but there was nothing where I was super like, oh my god, wow, I can't believe it. There was a lot of like, oh, okay, all right. Yeah, uh, so let me start with what wasn't there. Um, there was a lot of rumors swirling around about a like, GoldenEye remaster type of thing, and how we kept seeing stories about, like, you know, there's an achievement unlock, uh, like, you know, leak and all that. No mention of that at all in any way, shape, or form. Um, it is possible that because Nintendo would have to be involved with that, that maybe they're deciding to save that for the, the Nintendo Direct, because there would be a Switch port as well, theoretically, but I'm not really holding my breath on that. Um, there was also no mention of Activision at all, uh, which you guys remember Microsoft is acquiring them. They're still clearing legal hurdles to do that, but they were not mentioned in any way, shape, or form, which leads into the next bit. They did not mention in any way, shape, or form backwards compatibility with additional 360 or original Xbox titles, which I did not personally expect them to do, save for the fact that once they fully acquire Activision, it will unlock the licenses to a whole bunch of original Xbox and 360 games they could theoretically bring over. But that said, as mentioned before, they have not cleared those hurdles, so they don't technically own them and whatever. So I guess it's not that surprising they weren't mentioned. Um, there was also no, like, big, wow, I can't believe you resurrected that franchise, or at least franchise that I personally would have been excited about. Like, there was still, I'm still fighting for it to this day, there was still no Conker's Bad Fur Day 2. So let's, let's, enough of that, let's talk about what they actually did do. The first thing they talked about, and I'm going to be honest, this first game was probably the thing I liked the most about this entire show, which is probably why they let off with it. They were, came out with a game, or they're talking about a game called Redfall. Um, my, based on looking at the gameplay of this, it, if you took Borderlands, Silent Hill, and Far Cry and threw them into a blender and somehow gave birth to a child out of that, and I just dropped something by hitting the table, if somehow you created a game out of those three other games, Redfall is what I imagine that product would be. Um, I'm, it looked interesting to me. It's something I would check out. I don't know how well it would actually play, ultimately, but I, I liked what it was going for, and I'm curious about it. Uh, then they talked about a new Hollow Knight game, which um, looked to me... My, my girlfriend was sitting there on the couch. We watched it together, and she just said, uh, this looks like Cuphead and Child of Light merge together. Uh, I don't think she realized that Hollow Knight was already a thing, but yeah, it's, it's a new series. Uh, then they announced a, name called, uh, a new game called High on Life, which is from Justin Roiland. So he's the dude who makes uh, Rick and Morty uh, it's, you know, from Squanch Productions. They've had a few different games. I think they have like a VR game and stuff like that. Anyway, it looks like their interpretation of a... It, it, it looks like a game where these guys were clearly inspired by playing Halo a lot as fans, and they thought, what if we made Halo into a comedy that was our own? That's what it looked like to me. Visually, it looked very nice. It, if you like the kind of Justin Roiland animation style, of, again, like Rick and Morty, which actually, hilariously, is the thing that fell down. I had a Blu-ray of Rick and Morty sitting there. Um, and But except it's not a cartoon. It's CG, 3D elements. Um, We'll see. You know, I, I, I would give it a shot. Uh, the next thing they talked about was Riot Games. They do like League of Legends is going to have more integration with Xbox. So they're going to the games they have are going to start being more uh, available on, say, Game Pass and things like that. 
Uh, but yeah, they had a big focus on League of Legends there. Uh, then they talked about a game, I think it was a reveal, I don't think we knew about this game before, it was Plague Tale Requiem, which is a sequel to the previous, I think, Plague Tale Innocence, which I never actually played, um, but it looked kind of cool. Knowing nothing about Plague Tale, other than the fact that this was, in fact, the sequel, I looked at it, and when I saw it, based on what they were showing, I just thought, and this is this is just what my mindset was, was I was apparently combining different franchises to try and explain things, but I looked at it and I thought, this is Last of Us and uh, Horizon Zero Dawn coming together. That's that's what it looked like to me. I'm not saying it ultimately is, but that's what it looked like. Uh, then they had a big thing about Forza Motorsport. Looked amazing. If you like those type of games, visually stunning. I'm not into games like Forza. Um, then they talked about a flight simulation expansion. Now, I liked that. The Microsoft Flight Simulator, I have, a, obviously, I fly around a lot and I enjoy that. So I have a, an affinity for that, even though, to be completely honest, it's not the most interesting game to actually play. But it is fun to kind of mess around in. Uh, so they have some big expansion coming for it, I think, in November. And it's going to add, like, a whole bunch of, like, legacy aircraft. Like the Spirit of St. Louis, they even announced it as kind of some sort of tie-in with the Smithsonian over that. Uh, tons of various aircrafts and things like that that are going to be like integrated in the game and I don't think it's new maps because I think the whole point of that game is that like the whole world is flyable um, but they're, they're, I'm sure they added other things beyond just new planes uh, the other thing they, they announced which actually is available now apparently is they announced some uh, Halo DLC for flight simulators so like I don't know the name of the aircraft in Halo like the the carrier thing that's been there since like the first game that Master Chief I don't think he crash landed in it but I think they fly around whatever um, that thing is now playable for free as DLC in uh, Flight Simulator. Um, Overwatch 2 got announced, which that would be big to a lot of people. Obviously, Overwatch was a huge game. It just wasn't my franchise, but they announced that, and then they showed stuff from it. Uh, then they came up, they were talking about a game called, uh, it's either ARA or ERA, I don't know if you're supposed to pronounce it, History Untold. I watched this trailer and I sat there and I went, Civilization. Because that's exactly what I thought it was. I thought it was a new Civilization game. But then at the end, I was literally, I was completely stunned to find out it wasn't Civilization because it looked like Civilization. <laughs> um, then they talked about Elder Scrolls Online having a new, I don't know if it's a new game or a new expansion. I think it's just an expansion called High Isle. And I think it's already out. So I'm not, you know, I don't play ESO, but it's there. Um, Fallout 76, to their credit, they are still adding content and updating that. Uh, there's a new expansion called The Pit, which uh, is based in Pittsburgh. And that, for anybody who doesn't know, has never been to Pittsburgh, in Pittsburgh, it's very common to actually refer to that city as The Pit. Uh, so it's a very appropriate title there. Um, as for what actually happens within the DLC, I'm not entirely certain, but, in, you know, trailers online. Um, then they talked about, they did a Forza 5 expansion, and I sat there looking at it, and they were on these, like, big, like, red plasticky type of tubes and these blue plasticky type of tubes like you know cut together with the the realistic environments of the mountains and all that and i sat there and i looked at the girlfriend i'm like this looks like forza hot wheels and then naturally right after that they announced it was in fact a hot wheels integration there you go maybe you'll have actual forza hot wheels toys coming up um, they announced Arc 2, or at least they showed Arc 2 i don't know if this was technically an announcement for it but it, it actually looked pretty cool um, more stuff's falling. I gotta stop hitting the table. Uh, then they showed this game called Scorn. That was cool. Like, the first thing I thought watching it was like, is this a new Quake? Because it looked a lot like Quake. But like Quake, you know, through someone's very depressed mind if they had to like reinterpret what Quake even was. Uh, it looked really cool. Uh, I, want, I definitely want to see more of that. That, of all the things that we... It's either that or Redfall. That were like the two most like, alright, I need more information on that. Uh, that looked really cool. Uh, Flintlock, The Siege of Dawn. This one, I remember being strange because, like, both the girlfriend and I were looking at it and we're like, this looks really cool. I don't know how to explain this. Uh, it, it had, like, these triangle little portal things you were jumping through. We couldn't quite figure out, like, what to compare this to, and yet nothing about it seemed all that new. It, it's... I, I, watch the footage. Watch the trailer. Go out and check it out. That, that game looked pretty decent. Uh, Mo Yang came in and said, alright, we got a new game. Instead of just Minecraft, we now have Minecraft Legends, which is going to be like an action strategy type of game. And they got to do something. Uh, Lightyear Frontier. This one was, my girlfriend said it best, this was mech games in the Animal Crossing universe. It, it, you're basically playing Animal Crossing, but instead of cutesy little animals, you're playing as cutesy little mech warriors. Alright. 
Um, gunfire, it has to be report. I spelled that wrong. Let's just say I put an N at the end of that by mistake. I, I literally just wrote down cell shaded cuteness because I remember it being kind of like a, a thing where all these little cute little cell shaded teddy bears or whatever are like shooting at each other. It didn't make a whole big of impression to be honest. Um, the last case of Benedict Fox. This, the, the initial bit of this, like the 1930s, like noir look, and they're driving that like old Mercedes Benz type of thing. He's coming in, it's all dark. And then the storyline seems to be about a guy who uh, has to look into his, his dead father's mind to get, you know, the, the history of what happened and why he's dead and solve his murder type of thing. Uh, but the gameplay was very platformery. Um, and uh, we kind of looked at it like it was a, a weird fusion of concepts, uh, narrative concepts would be like Constantine the comic book slash Keanu Reeves movie, um, and Inception. But then the gameplay was very, you know, platformerish. It, it, it had a cool vibe to it. As Dusk, As Dusk Falls uh, was a game that... I, they were describing it as interactive cinema. It was... The animation style kind of looked like... An old, like, comic book brought to light. Like, maybe if you take, like, a photo of yourself on, like, on your phone, and you go to, like, Instagram, and you put on one of those filters that's meant to make it look like a comic book, that's what that entire game looked like. And they... I kind of look at it like, in no way, shape, or form does the gameplay uh, is consistent with what I'm about to say, but the concept of Quantum Break. Does anybody remember that game from, like, ten years ago for the Xbox One? The idea at the time was... We want to make interactive cinema uh, where, like, the movie and the, the game are completely tied together. Like, it kind of felt like they were going for that concept, but rather than... The problem with that game in particular was that it was too much movie and no... And then when you were playing a game, you were, like, forgot that you had been playing a game, and then you're playing kind of a normal game. This one seems like it's trying to blend them together a little bit better. And I guess the guy with the motorcycle outside doesn't really like this. But uh, anyway, uh, the next one up... There's a game called Naraka. Now, Naraka is like, it looked like a fighting game. Apparently, it's been on PC for quite some time. I, to be honest, I don't play on PC, so I hadn't heard of it before. Uh, but it's coming to Xbox. Uh, then there was a game called Pentiment. Uh, I think that was the one that was like, it was like a 2D, it kind of looked like a, a, a coloring book come to life, like a medieval coloring book. And I think it was kind of an rpg -esque type of game. It's just that the animation was uh, like that. It didn't... Didn't do anything special for me. Um, Grounded. Uh, this game, I had never heard of this. I don't know if this was a debut or not. But Grounded, if you wanted to take the premise of Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, you know, the Rick Moranis movie, and just said, okay, we take that premise, but instead of kids just trying to get home, what they're doing is they have to shoot all the insects and explore their environment. And we make, like, a shooting game out of that premise. That's what Grounded was. Um, Erebon. Um, and this is going to be a surprising reference to some people, but to me, this looked like a combination of Shinobi, like the PS2 era Shinobi, and Alita Battle Engine. Yes, I just made an anime reference. Um, it looked like you took those things and put them together, and that's how you got Erebon. Uh, then we saw this really cool trailer for this, like, necromancer thing, and my girlfriend's all excited. She's like, this looks amazing. What game is this? And then we found out it was just a class announcement of necromancers for Diablo 4, and it just kind of sucked the energy out of the room because we don't really play Diablo 4, but that's what it was. Um, then they had this admittedly neat trailer for Sea of Thieves Season 7. It was cr very meta. <laughs> very amusing just to be like, come play our game! You know, they have this, like, Disney-esque type of song, if you will, like, um, you know, like the Gaston song kind of in Beauty and the Beast. A little bit of that vibe with the goal of just getting you to play the next season of Season of Thieves. Uh, Ravenlock. Um, what I wrote down here was Zelda and Minecraft animation meets Alice in Wonderland. So it was... Uh, it had like this kind of, uh, you know, Zelda style gameplay where you're like running around in an open field and you have to get down to the dungeons, all that sort of thing. Uh, but then there was like some of the characters, like the main character, appear to be kind of normal animation within that universe. And then a lot of the uh, it, it, environmental characters appeared to be Minecrafty style where they're pixelated and so on and so forth. But that universe really gave me Alice in Wonderland vibes. I mean, there was, like, little hints of, like, you know, the, 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 the like, the Cheshire Cat and all that stuff, as well as, like, the, the cards and the Fat Queen. It looked like you just took those things and kind of threw them together. Um, next one they did was a game called Cocoon, which 
was it started off with this like little mosquito looking thing picking up like a marble and and then it eventually kind of pulled up to this cubert type of angle like or a sonic 3d blast type of angle it was kind of an overhead platformer that's ultimately what the gameplay was um Wo long fallen destiny uh looked like it was the team ninja game so they're the guys who made like um uh, they made uh, the Dead or Alive games, and they made the Ninja Gaiden games. Uh, this, to me, when I first saw this, I was like, okay, it's probably not a new Dead or Alive. It might be a new Ninja Gaiden. And then I'm looking at the animation, I'm like, no, that character looks somewhat familiar. And then I misunder I, I thought that character was the character from Onimusha. <laughs> um, and I was like, no, that's wrong. Then I thought, wow, are they making a new Nobunaga's Ambition game? No, it's its own thing. Um, more information needed. Then they announced, like, a Persona collection. I guess that was a big surprise. They were making a big deal suddenly about how they want to get more Japanese games involved in, in the Xbox. So it's going to have Persona 5 and, like, I don't know. I'm not a Persona guy. So, yeah, but they're, they're a bunch of them are coming to Xbox. Um, and then they brought Hideo Kojima out, and he did a little pre-recorded thing basically just announcing he's going to be doing a game for Xbox. There was no details on what the game was, and he, by his own admission, he's like, it's going to take a while. And then Hideo Kojima turned, and we could be talking a decade, like, who knows. Um, but that's all he said about that. And then the last thing they did was they showed a lot of Starfield. Um, well, a lot relative to the time frame you have to work with, like 10 minutes of it. Todd Phillips came out, and he's like, hey, there's all the things about Starfield. It kind of looks like they were trying to fulfill the promise of No Man's Sky, like when it was originally made. Um, now, granted, Starfield has been in production hell for years, so we'll have to see how it actually turns out. But yeah, it, overall, like this, you know, nothing in there where I'm like, wow, I can't wait. It, it's like the two that really, really kind of intrigued me uh, were Scorn and Redfield, uh, or sorry, Redfall. Um, which is cool. I give them massive props for the fact that they didn't do any gimmicky stuff. There was no random, like, song and dance. They were just like, here's the games, go. Here's the games, go. I give them props for that. I also, and this doesn't get enough credit, they had a whole lot of brand new IPs. You know, I like that. But at the same time, there was no, like, big, we resurrected a franchise. There was no big sequel thing. There was no real... Uh, it, there's not much about the Xbox brand in general, aside from one thing, which was, hey, by the way, sorry about the sirens and stuff. Man, it is loud today when I'm recording this. I apologize. Um, there was no big, like, announcements about, like, new Xbox hardware or new Xbox partnerships or new Xbox mergers or anything like that or new features, other than they basically just talked more about mobile integration uh, and how that's going to start being more of a thing with Xbox where you can use your phone for more and more stuff. Um, and, of course, they emphasize, hey, you should really get Game Pass, because Game Pass is so cool, you should get Game Pass. Aside from those things, it was really just very game-centric, and I'm cool with that. So, hopefully you guys found this interesting. Did you guys watch the show? Did you like anything better? You know, what do you think? Uh, hopefully this recap helps you a little bit. If you guys can do me a favor, go into the description below. Follow me on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Discord, Patreon, all that sort of stuff. I appreciate that. Follow the new channel. We're going fly around. I eat and I get fatter. I'm sure you guys enjoy that. Uh, and uh, thank you guys very much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you all later.